I would like to call on uh, Caroline and Belinda um, to talk us through lessons learned from doing interdisciplinary research. I'm sorry, colleagues. <laughs> no. It's the blue one, it's not the, it's not the dark one, but that's fine. We sent a, another, it's another slide deck. That's fine. Just check, just check. Technology, our friend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's introduce ourselves while we're waiting for the slides. I'm Caro Vandenberg. I'm in um, information systems at, the inform at, at UWC. And I'm Belinda Fista. I'm a professional urban planner and a senior lecturer at CPUT. Let's see, is it coming? The blue one is fine. The other one just looks a little bit better, but it's <laughs> we'll work. We'll work with the draft version. <laughs> The mic. Yeah, we'll stand closer. Okay. We can start. I know we, yeah, we, we'll start. All right. So, a bit of background to the background. Um, our, we started our project that we're going to share with you today um, with a casual conversation where Caro sort of alluded to the fact that she's frustrated with her information system students that, that very quickly jump certain stages and go into solution mode very quickly without really having a deep understanding of problems. And that resonated with me because in urban planning I think we sit forever and a day in the problem. And we, um, and, and we unpack the problem to a point where we are exhausted and we hardly ever get to see what the solutions are. So we thought, you know, within the context of the realities of pressing urban environmental challenges that we have within um, not just Cape Town, South Africa, globally, and within the complexities of higher education, the one that, that, that we are drawn to as education for sustainable development, maybe we should bring these two groups together, these two groups of students, the one that jumps to solution and the other one that sits in the problem, and see what happens. And this happened, the conversation happened around about 2019, and then we'd, uh, we were all eager and motivated, and in February 2020, we were gonna start our project, and you all know what happened in March 2020. So we started developing this interdisciplinary um, student project, but then a transdisciplinary research project between information system students of University of the Western Cape and the urban planning students of CPUT. So, so the way that we work is that we're looking at educational for sustainable development within certain frames or with certain concepts that we brought into the study. Um, and Chiefly of that is what we call smart sustainable. So it's the digital and the humanities. It's working with the SDGs, with SDG 11, uh, with our students looking at cities um, and communities, uh, innovations in that. And with that, we very much use this concept of local lived knowledge. In other words, the people within those communities really understand their problems they understand probably already potential solutions to their problems. So we really work very much with the people in the communities where we, where we send our student teams. And within this, the students need to come up with digital social innovations. So it's, the, it's applications, um, anything to do with a problem area, but framing it within the social area. So it's D, what the DSI innovations that they need to come up with using the SDGs. Because we, we kind of chiefly focusing on the SDG 11, but you can't see them in isolation. They're all kind of interrelated. So some teams will look more at a health-related problem. Other teams will, will kind of tackle education or local problems. 
And the important thing that, we, that we're really bringing with this interdisciplinary and now more transdisciplinary is, is these collaborative partnerships. So, so we have partnerships between us as the academics, the students, the community. We're also now partnering with the city of Cape Town and with CHEC or the Cape Higher Education Consortium. And then we bring in uh, this Society 5.0. So, so Society 5.0 moving away from the so-called fourth industrial revolution that's very much an error. I think you, you also kind of mentioned that. Um, that's very much industry focus. How do we do digital transformation in industry to say, listen, it's all about the human, the human side in this tech uh, revolution. How do we look at making it better? tech for all or tech for good. And that's really where Society 5.0 comes in. So these are just some examples of what the students are doing. It's just, uh, they work, we, we use kind of a design thinking cycle with the students. So they go into the communities, they go through these different phases, they understand the problem, sometimes not so well. We sometimes have to go back and do this a couple of times. But then they come up with, Initially, within the cycle, they have to identify four potential prototypes, and then we refine that a little bit further. So if you look at this, these are, these are some examples of what the students have done in the past, um, looking at, for instance, waste management or with uh, wetlands, building in wetlands, and any project, uh, pr problems related to that. Um, or this was uh, examples where they had to look at financial literacy and how do we create financial literacy uh, or elements of that within the communities. So they kind of go and, they, and, and then define it further. So without further ado, I think we're here to talk about our experiences. We just wanted to give some background in terms of working in interdisciplinary environments. So, so what are those things. So we came up with five um, sort of ideas that um, we want to offer as lessons. I'm always afraid to say lessons because everybody's lessons and experience are so, are so different. So the first thing that we, we thought is absolutely essential in the interdisciplinary space is that collaboration does not come naturally and that we should not assume it. Um, not for us as professionals and not for our students as young professionals. Although we would think, you know, the human race is a social species, it seems that as soon as we start working, we tend to go into our little silos, our little corner of the world and trying to, to fix problems there. So within our learning space, um, we are very explicit with collaboration. We tell students, uh, we do a presentation, we tell them what their expectations are. Differences between something like cooperation and collaboration, for example, that they are not the same thing and that you cannot sell it as collaboration if you're only cooperating. And of course, students are very resistant to this. I think um, colleagues are very resistant to it because you don't have control. You, you're, giving, you're handing over control to the, to the collective. So one of the things that we do is uh, we let our students just the previous one. Yes, uh, we let our students um, negotiate a code of conduct for themselves in their group. We don't um, interfere there. It is up to them because they need to buy into it. And um, another thing with regards to collaboration that we do is with all the reflections that we do with our students, we have a section within the questionnaire that's specifically reflecting on their collaborative abilities and collaborative skills. Then the next one with regards to interdisciplinary work is be flexible. Now it sounds obvious, but it's very difficult to, to, to go with the flow and be okay with it, to be okay with sitting in that com complex space and um, throwing all your planning that you have done out the window and pivot and, and change direction. But you have to create space um, when you are working with interdisciplinary projects to be as flexible as possible. Um, design thinking helps us in this, so it gives a bit of structure to that, where we are continuously iterating, making changes, our reflections that we use, um, and the fact that we are continuously in contact with our student groups help us to, to, to like I said, pivot and, and be flexible and make the changes that's needed. 
Then uh, the next lesson we learned it, especially within the context, like Belinda mentioned, when COVID struck and suddenly these interdisciplinary groups that were going to come together and we had all these wonderful plans working in communities had to stop and we had to take everything online. Um, and then we realized technology is your friend. We can use, there's so many different options. Um, it was interesting within the different student group because my students in IS are obviously a lot more comfortable with tech and the tools and the different tools um, and how quickly the, the students adopted and we kind of adopted and started saying, right, how do we do this? What can we use? What is working? What is not working? Um, and we consciously said to the students that it's open. You, we're not going to prescribe what you use, how you communicate, the kind of platforms that you apply. There's multiple ways, but we will kind of guide you to, to kind of encourage collaboration and, and flexibility, but it's open. Things are changing, and I, we had the, on the panel discussion, we spoke about this, this whole debate between tools, uh, what kind of tools do we use, or how do we think about using tools, and what are the kind of skills that we start applying within this? Do you want to talk through this one? I'll, I'll talk through this one. Um, and then, th these are kind of very much interrelated. So, so building in feedback loops, Feedback becomes incredibly important in this interdisciplinary space. You can't almost let a gay day go by without kind of checking in, seeing where are we, are we still on track, what is happening, especially working with the, with the different groups of students. And believe me, you will all know, working with student groups um, are always difficult, especially now putting students from different institutions together um, from different professions, they kind of, there's lots of different things, it's very complex and, and fluid this space, but feedback remains the, the thing that we really uh, try, and, try and keep up. And, and within this, we kind of try and hone in on the way to the students to say, embrace experimentation, change is good, there's nothing wrong with change. Don't overinvest in your solution that you're thinking this is the solution to the problem because it's not. We don't even understand the problem yet. Um, and really digging in and going deeper and also the whole idea between failure is fine. Don't see failure as a bad thing. It's been so honed in, uh, in terms of if you failed, it's bad in terms of assessment, but failure is good because we learn from that. Let's learn, let's fail fast and let's try something else. Let's pivot, go again, try the next thing. The important thing is the process. That's where the, where the focus lies, is in this process, this learning process, and what we learn from that. The end results, which is these prototypes that then get developed further, that's not the end, that's not, no, that's not what we're trying to do. It's the whole, the, the, the way or the process of getting there that's really important. And then um, we also, uh, and I think Belinda also mentioned that, bring in reflection and kind of using Schoen's model of reflection in action and reflection on action. So the, the whole process, um, we need to reflect, stand still while we're busy with it. Um, the students are writing blogs, so they're weekly blogs where they kind of reflect on what happened what worked, what didn't work, what did I learn from this, how am I going to do it next week, or how, how will I apply the learning um, in terms of what we do next. And then um, also we use questionnaires um, throughout, so, so regular questionnaires to kind of measure where they're at. And then at the end, what did I learn from this? So, so what is the learning from, um, oh, we don't have the last... You can just do the conclusion with our last, if you can remember it, because this is the old deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Shall I quickly go and fetch my... Uh, yeah. So, so just to conclude and, and, and to wrap it up, um, I think the, f the first thing that we were thinking of is just to be okay with the highly complex type of environment. I think a lot of us as lecturers, our students take cues from us, so if you are um, semi-freaked out, then know that the students are totally freaked out. And we do drive 
the um, level of uh, uh, comfort. So to be comfortable with complexity is what we actually want. Okay, I got the first one right. <laughs> and then the second one is that um, interdisciplinary work is absolutely unpredictable. And I think in there lies the beauty and in there lies the richness. So be okay with the unpredictability and communicate to your, that to your students and let them know that, look, we're gonna make a plan. This is now happening, let's, let's make, a, make a plan. Um, interdisciplinary we, work we feel is absolutely essential to solve the wicked problems that we um, are, are faced with, um, not just in higher education, but more importantly, uh, society as a whole. I mean, we've got a huge job um, as, as urban planners. We are very aware of our job and um, all the information systems as well. A huge responsibility um, trying to tackle these wicked problems. So um, we cannot do it alone. Nobody can do, do these things alone or try and come up with uh, sustainable solutions alone. And then the last thing is that we're saying interdisciplinary work is absolutely rewarding. We've, we've wanted to find joy in the academic space that you all know can be very stressful, very single-minded, very tick box and all those other things. We are not signing up for that anymore. We want joy in our workplace and uh, we find that we can actually um, develop projects that's rewarding for ourselves and rewarding for our students. Do you want to just do that last thought? Um, just the last thought. So going forward, where are we going now? We're busy de developing a platform where we're going to share kind of, it's kind of a communal space where we share what we're doing, we share all the, all the work that's all the different prototypes and all the, all the outputs that's been developed by the project. And it'll also be kind of stories, digital stories. This is uh, from of the of the because the students do that, and uh, kind of conversations, kind of snippets on these different concepts that I use. What does that mean, and how do we apply that? Thanks a lot. I got a yellow card. <laughs> Colleagues, can we take one or two questions? Thank you, that was very quick uh, with the microphone. Thank you for this, this really wonderful um, presentation. So I, I've tried to go through similar processes and the things you bring up, you know, I experienced exactly the same thing, the stress, but also the reward. Can you say a little bit about how the students experienced it, especially at the end, right? So during the process, they're stressed out and everything doesn't work and blah, blah. But what, how do they experience it at the end when it's done? Do they say never again? because this was too much, or this was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, um, we haven't, this isn't on now, but we, we, we haven't, this was a lot of fun response yet. Um, this is the, the third iteration that we're busy with now. I think one of the reflections, the most important reflections for me was where um, a student, um, where a student was saying that in the end they cannot remember whether it was who in the group were urban planning students and who were information system students. So for me, a little light bulb point on then, because I think that's, that's exactly, the, it, it's about the knowledge creation and not about the disciplinary knowledge. Yeah, I felt like that. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so we can track through the reflective questionnaires that the students sort of in the, the first reflection, students are totally freaked out and, they, and, and our questionnaire allows them to show that. And then we would always have a session where we talk to them about that in their groups and in a big group. And the second one, it's almost, the second reflection, so halfway through the project, it's almost as if the students have succumbed to it. You know, this is crazy. This is not going to end well. But, you know, we are here, so let's go with it. So the reflections there is sort of, mm, let's just get on with it. And, and the last one we do find very, very positive. Um, feedback and especially on the, the, the type of learning that happens at, and the surprise because I, we ask them what are the big surprises for you and there are many many um, su surprising elements that they would not foresee at the beginning. 
Yes. You Great. To Thanks. No, so, so I think this is also, if, if we are doing interdisciplinary work, it's essentially the same, right? So it's not just the students, but mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, no, we, we also found it in yeah. the beginning. It's kind of, who's the important one here? Is it IS or planning? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Caroline and, Be and Belinda.